For the recent OpenTunes collaboration, we had to animate a run cycle and have a scrolling background. And for that, I tried my hand at animating a scrolling parallax background, which turned out to be really easy to do. So that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends, and welcome to a look at animating a scrolling parallax background in OpenTunes. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren, and on this channel I have OpenTunes tutorials, news videos, collaborations and animations. So subscribe to not miss them, and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating in OpenTunes, check out the other videos on my channel, including plenty of beginner videos. And to help you dip in and out of this video, I've got links in the description to each section of this tutorial. And I've also included the project files, so you can download them to follow along. So it's been a while since I've made a tutorial, as I've been working on the Dwanko running collaboration. But I wanted over the next few weeks to make a few tutorials covering some of the features in OpenTunes that I use for my entry, which I think you'll find useful. So today, I'm looking at scrolling background, or for that matter, scrolling a foreground. And like most things in OpenTunes, there's going to be many ways to do this, but today I'll show you just one way to do it, and the way I did it for my Dwanko collab entry. But if you have a different way, or any other tips, why not tell us all about it in the comments below. So first in this new project, I'll add a basic background, so we've got something to see. And then I'll add a new level for the scrolling background that I want to add. And I'll just use a Toon's Raster level, but you can use any of the three level types because they all work the same way. And then I'll draw it. And this one I'll make very simple. And as this drawing is exactly one screen width, if you add too much detail, you could see it obviously repeating, which won't be noticeable for a short animation, but if it's shown for too long, it'll be really obvious. So be mindful of the detail you add with screen size drawings. However, your audience shouldn't really be watching the background too closely, and if you take a look at professional cartoons, you'll often see repeating backgrounds anyway. And Scooby Doo is a classic for saving money by having repeating scrolling backgrounds. But larger images are better suited to scrolling for longer periods, and if you're interested, I'll take a look at how to set up larger backgrounds next week. So, back to the process. And the first thing you want to do is to make sure that the image will align with itself accurately so that you won't notice the join while it scrolls. And to do this, you create your first frame in a column, as I have here. Then you copy the drawing to another column. Then you use the Animate tool to align the duplicate drawing to the right of the current frame. And here's a quick tip for you. If you lock the north-south option, you can only drag your image left and right. When it's about at the right place, you'll notice that the distance shows almost 1920 pixels, which is the size of the drawing. And you can see this when you start a new level, shown here. Now your version of OpenTunes might not show the distance in pixels, it might use millimetres or inches, but you can change this in the Preferences dialog, on the interface page, by changing the units here. So we can change the value of the east-west position to 1920, and that means that the images will align accurately together. So now you've got two copies of exactly the same image side by side. So you can simply complete the image so the drawing aligns with itself. And now on column 1 of the image in the centre of the screen, we simply need to set a key of this initial position. And we can do that either by hitting the key button at the bottom of the screen here, which adds a key for each of the animatable values. But as we will need to adjust the east and west values, we can do it by clicking it into the east-west values box and then pressing enter. And that'll add a key into the timeline for that one value. So now we need to set up the animation itself. And the first thing we need to do is set the default animation option to be linear. And we do this in the preferences dialog. So if this value is anything but linear, change it down to linear. And that means there'll be no speed up or slow down during the animation so your viewers won't spot the join as the animation loops. So finally, it's just a case of deciding how quickly you want the image to scroll across the screen. And the intention is for this first image to scroll entirely off the screen to the left there, and for the right image to scroll entirely into view, to finish at exactly the same place as the first drawing started. 
So if it takes one second to travel that far, we need exactly 24 scrolling frames, with frame 25 being a duplicate of frame 1. But as the drawings are skyscrapers in the distance, we don't want them to move too fast, so I think 2 seconds will be enough. So what we need to do is to put these two drawings back where they were, so I'll undo that. And then extend all of the frames to go up to frame 49. And then on the final frame, frame 49, remove each of the images exactly one screen width. And as we know, a screen width is exactly 1920 pixels. And you can see by the east-west value, when I drag this to one screen width, we can set this to negative 1920. And that's exactly one screen width. And on the second column, I drag this into view. And the east-west position needs to be zero. And now if we play it, it should scroll perfectly in 48 frames. And if we change to the camera view, and then play it on a loop, you shouldn't be able to see the join at all. So here's the animation. And you can just copy these drawings and the animation keys to create a loop of whatever length you need. But you'll need to add another key on frame 48 so that you can just copy the first 48 frames. And you can do this by going to frame 48 and either click in the key button, which adds a value for the current position on all animatable values, but we only want to set a key for the east-west value. So if I undo that, and on frame 48, move to the east-west values box on the toolbar and press enter and you'll see a key appear. Now do the same on the second column. So now we can play this on a loop and get just 48 frames. But it's not totally obvious of how to copy both the frames and the keys. And the way you can do this is by holding the control key before you highlight the drawings. So holding the control key, I can click and drag up to frame 48, press control. I can then delete frame 49's keys and drawings and then paste from frame 49. And if I zoom out, I can paste again and have this repeat as many times as necessary. But if you do it this way, you'll have two columns and four keys for this one simple piece of animation and it's easy to miss copying the keys or to mix them up in some way. So to simplify the X sheet, and that is to hide the keys, to reduce the number of columns and to make it easier to copy them, what I'd recommend is to use a sub X sheet. And if we do that, we don't need to add the two extra keys on frame 48, so we're back where we started. And then all you have to do is just click and drag over the two column headers, right click, and then choose Collapse. And you get this dialog asking about peg bars, but we're not using any, so you could choose either option, and then just press Apply. And now both columns show as a single column, and you don't see any keys. The animation is still there, and you can expand them out to look at the contents at any time and edit them by clicking on this button, open sub -X sheet. And there you can see both columns and all the keys. And then press this button to close the sub -X sheet to get back to the main timeline. So the first thing you want to do is to recognize that the final frame, number 49, is exactly the same as frame one. So if we delete frame 49, so we're only showing 48 frames, and now we can just duplicate these 48 frames to get the repeating animation. And to do that you've got a lot of choices. But the two ways you're likely to use are to use copy and paste as we did earlier. So if you click on the bar at the top, you select all 48 frames, you can press Ctrl C, go to a blank frame and then press Ctrl V and you've got the copied frames. And then this continues the cycle for as long as necessary. I'll undo that. But the easiest way is to use the repeating menu option to let OpenTunes do the work. So again, highlight the frames that you're repeating, then right click anywhere on any of these frames, go to the Edit Cell Numbers menu item and choose Repeat. Then on this dialog, you choose to repeat these frames a set number of times, say 10 times. Then if you press Enter, it'll tell you how many frames that'll extend up to, which is up to frame 528. Or you type in the frame number you want to loop up to. So for a 30 second animation, we'll put this up to 720 and then just hit repeat. And if I zoom out, you'll see it's repeated that all the way up to frame 720. And we could do the same for the plain background by clicking on the last frame, right click, edit cell numbers, repeat, up to frame 
720. So now we've got a background repeating and the buildings repeating for 30 seconds. Now of course you haven't got to have a joined up constantly repeating background, you can have intermittent scrolling. So for instance, if you wanted some street lights, you can draw them on a new layer, animate them at the pace we've just set up, two seconds to cross the screen, but then don't have them constantly passing. Let me show you. So you can see here I've started with the lights positioned off screen to the far right, then move into the screen and off to the far left. And I did this by setting the first position, east west to 1920, which is exactly off the screen to the right. Then at frame 49, I've set the east west value to zero, so it's exactly in the centre of the screen. And on frame 97, I've moved the position to minus 1920, which is exactly off the screen. So now the lights follow at the same pace as the buildings do. And again, I'd collapse this to be a sub X sheet by right clicking on the header and choosing collapse. And that removes all the keys off the timeline. But because the lights don't actually appear on screen until here at frame eight, I can choose to delete the first seven frames. And if I scroll to where they disappear off the left hand side, that's here drawing number 89 onwards, I can delete those. So these are the only actual frames that we need to show that animation of the lights moving on the screen and then off. But what that means is we can now click on this bar to highlight them all or you can click and drag over all the frames, choose copy and then intermittently paste them onto the timeline now you see them passing on the screen at different times, which makes the background look less obviously repeating. And of course you can scroll vertically instead of horizontally, when showing someone falling or a rocket shooting up, for instance, by placing one drawing above the other and then animating using only the north-south option instead of the east-west option to move it either up or down. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to show parallax scrolling, that's one piece of the scene moving faster than another to show that one part of your scene is closer to the viewer than the other. Then all you need to do is move the nearest part of the scene faster than your other further part of the scene. So to do that, I'll step into this sub -X sheet and I'll take a copy of the drawing and step out of the sub -X sheet. I'll insert a new column by clicking on the column header and pressing the insert key. You can also right click and choose insert above or below. I'll then paste the drawing into this column and then we'll decide how quickly we want it to move. Well, these buildings are behind the others so we want them to move slower. Instead of taking 48 frames to move 2 seconds, I think we'll choose to move 72 frames which is 3 seconds. Then we'll send it 72 frames to the animation and an extra one to add the key for the frame that returns the drawing back to the first position. So let's hide the original buildings. And as we did before, we'll insert another column and again copy the drawing into the second column and extend it for the same length. So what we need to do is to firstly move both drawings upwards slightly so they stand out behind the other buildings. And then we'll type the distance so we recognise the number. So that's 80 pixels roughly, so I'll type 80 and then I can put the same value in the other column's north-south value. So they're both at the same height. So as before we want to set the start and ending position of both of these two columns. So if one of the columns the start position is 0 pixels, the other column it's 1920, and then the end position for the first column is minus 1920, exactly one screen width to the left, and the second column the ending position is the same as the first column start position which is 0. Now again, we can see that movement happening there. And then if we collapse those two columns down again into a sub-X sheet by right-clicking and choosing Collapse, we've now got two sub-X sheets for these tall buildings. So if I show the first set of tall buildings as well, and now you can see they travel at a different speed to each other. 
but you'll notice that they start at the same position. And that's because both of them have the drawing set to zero position on the first frame and then move on from there. And when we fix this, it simply highlights a number of frames from either of the spec sheets. Press Ctrl X to cut and that brings down all the frames to the left. So now this column is showing from frames number 20, so you can see the offset. And then we move to the end and simply paste those cut frames to the end. So it ends here on frame 18. But because it starts on frame 19, we've still got the cycle. So now I can simply repeat this column by selecting all the frames in this back section, right click and choose edit cell numbers repeat up to frame number 720 as before and then we've got a repeating animation with parallax scrolling. And you probably change the colouring using some of the effects or add a small blur effect to the buildings in the background to make them look different and stand apart. Plus the drawings of course, every building is the same colour here so if you had them with different colours they would look much better. So here's the final animation running, showing the different columns moving at different paces, creating the parallax effect. And next week I'll show you how you can create larger drawings to help hide the repetitive nature of a screen size drawing level. But that's how easy it is to repeatedly scroll part of your scene and to do so using parallax. Why not give it a go and see for yourself how easy it is? And that's a guarantee. Mm -hmm.